In this problem, we have to sketch the graph of these parametric equations and write them in rectangular form. So let's go ahead and go through this very, very carefully. So first, let's start off by writing them in rectangular form. So whenever you have trig functions like this, the trick is to solve for the trig function. So we'll start by dividing by 8 here. So we get cosine of theta, I'll write it here on the left, equals x over 8. Over here we do the same thing. To solve for sine, we simply divide by 8. And that gives us sine of theta equals y over 8. Okay, now we use a familiar identity. Recall that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So sine is y over 8. So that's going to give us y over 8 squared plus, and then cosine is x over 8. So that'll be x over 8 squared. And that's equal to 1. That gives us y squared over 64 plus x squared over 64, and that's equal to 1. If we multiply everything by 64, we end up with x squared plus y squared equals 64. And this is the rectangular equation of the parametric equations. Notice it fits the form x squared plus y squared equals r squared. This is the equation of a circle centered at the origin with radius equal to the square root of 64. So the radius here is 8. So whenever you have x equals a number times cosine and y equals a number times sine and these numbers are the same, it's always going to be a circle. So if it was a circle of radius 3, it would be 3 cosine theta, 3 sine theta. Okay, so to graph it, We'll draw the y-axis, we'll draw the x-axis. And it's a circle of uh, radius 8. So from the center, you just go up 8, you know, you put a dot. You go down 8, you put a dot. You go right 8, you put a dot. And you go left 8, and you put a dot. Then you just connect the dots in a circular motion and attempt to draw something that looks like a circle. So that would be the graph. The only thing we're still missing, though, is the orientation. So I'm going to show you how to find that. So to find the orientation, we make a table. So here we have theta, and then here we have x, and then here we have y. And the trick is to plot values in increasing values of theta. So we can pick nice numbers like 0 and pi over 2, so if you plug in 0 for x, you get 8 times the cosine of 0. The cosine of 0 is 1, so you just get 8 times 1. So you just get 8. So we just get 8. If you plug in 0 for the sine, sine of 0 is 0. So your y is just going to be 0. So when, t, when theta equals 0, rather, we're right here. So this ordered pair... 8 comma 0 corresponds to theta equals 0. When theta equals pi over 2, we plug that into cosine, we get 0. So our x coordinate is 0. And we plug that into sine, and the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So we just get 8 times 1, so we get 8. So when theta is pi over 2, we're up here at the point 0 comma 8. So you might say, okay, the orientation is counterclockwise. Well, maybe it went the other way. It didn't, but let's just be cautious and do one more value. How about pi? When theta is pi, we get the cosine of pi, which is negative 1. So x becomes negative 8. And the sine of pi is 0, so y is going to be equal to 0. So now we're over here. So this corresponds to theta equals pi. So you can see that we're going in a counterclockwise direction. So the orientation is counterclockwise. You can draw these arrows to indicate that it is actually counterclockwise. And so that would be a perfect graph, or almost perfect if it looked like a circle, of the parametric equations. That's it.